to a brand new episode of Delivering Marketing Joy. I am your host, Kirby Hosman, and joining me today is a rock star. I know she's a rock star because it's in the title I'm about to give her. She is the social media manager at ASI. She's a rock star. She's a guru. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking a lot about social media. I'm excited to be joined by Melissa. Newman. Thanks so much for joining me. Oh my God, this is my pleasure. When you asked me, I was like, yes, I can't wait. This is going to be so cool. So thank you for having me on your show. Oh, it's it's truly my pleasure. As, as we just said before we started recording, I really enjoyed the conversation you had with Bobby Lehu, Taylor Boy, Borst, uh, Ali Brunton, and uh, about social media. And I was like, I really wanted to reach out to you. So um, I want to jump right in, um, you know, with you being a social media manager, at ASI, which I consider to be a media company. Obviously, there's more that ASI is, but you guys really, you're a media company. You do magazines and all this other stuff. So I, I'm fascinated by that role, a social media manager for a media company. So can you talk to me a little bit about what like a day in the life looks like? Is there the same stuff? Is it always different? How's that look? That's a really good question. So I'm lucky in that this is a newer role, if you can believe it, like ASI has been around for such a long time, but this role morphed out of uh, Vin Driscoll's original role. Like he came on and was wearing multiple hats. And I think it was this situation where he was like, I can't keep foregoing sleep. Like I need somebody to come in to do this like full time. And then we also needed somebody to help with customer service, um, which we realized like, I think you know, people are becoming more aware of the value of having somebody at least partially set on social media, providing customer service, mining groups, making sure questions are answered and how like valuable social listening and monitoring is for a business. So we brought in Patrick, who was my predecessor, and then I came in after. So this role now with me being in it, I think full time has only been around for under five years, but was managed by Vin. So when I came in, they were looking for somebody to really establish and take their growth and followers and start building out more content specifically for Facebook and LinkedIn, which is great. But we have other social media channels we felt like we could still engage our audience in. And we're kind of giving them the love that um, they needed because of the fact that it's a heavy lift, you know, it's a heavy lift to do more than one social media network well and to really provide robust engaging content. So they're like, we really just need one point person and I came in. So I've been able to define what my role is, which is great. I'm a very creative person. I love collaborating. I love trying new things. So they kind of, um, you know, for lack of a better way of saying it let me run wild they were like all right you know we see what you're going to bring to the table so not every day um, is the same which i love so i'll work on a podcast i'll be working on strategies or campaigns i'll be creating content i'll be uh, coming up with scripts for the podcast it's it's always variety or we're prepping for one of our events like asi chicago which is coming up soon which i can't wait <laughs> so yeah very busy <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. I, you, like you mentioned, Vin, you guys have several people who are active, like on Twitter. And I totally agree about the concept of doing customer service through social. Yeah. Uh, there's a great book called Hug Your Haters by Jay Bayer, who talks about that, about how you can really turn people around by doing good customer service. So I think that's, that's great. great. So I, next question for me is just like, when people ask you, and I'm sure they do being social media manager for this, how do you do social media better? Like, I know that's a broad question, but what advice do you give them? That's a really good question. So my first thing is I always think about your messaging, defining your audience and the type of content realistically that you can create. Cause I think sometimes like we get caught where we're unclear about the message, so we confuse our audience. We speak to everybody, so we might as well speak to no one because it's you know a surefire way for us to not connect with somebody and hopefully eventually at some point bring them into our flywheel and convert them as a customer and retain them. And then we just start making content with really 
without us thinking about like how we're going to reinforce our brand on social. And then maybe we see somebody else do something that is successful and we think we can replicate it. And it's like, you know, you may not know that that person has specialized training in videography or has a background in graphic design, or, you know, it's kind of like, I think if you put some time in initially before you just immediately sign up for a platform, like there's nothing wrong with experimentation, but if you are looking like a lot of people in this industry for the sake of your question are, which is utilizing social media as a business tool for communication, you know, putting some extra time up front um, just pays off so much in the long run because you don't waste time on platforms that don't work. You're not putting out tons of content, wasting marketing budgets that you really don't have to waste on stuff that's just really not gonna move the needle, whether with building your brand or eventually soft selling so you can get a transaction. Like that would be my thing is really to hone in on your message, define who you're speaking to and think about the content you like to create and can actually realistically create. That would be my thing. What about you? What would you say? Yeah, I, I love that your point about what you can create. Cause I always say that it's not about what you can create, it's about what you can recreate consistently. Right. Like, because everybody can do one really cool video, whether you hire it out, whether, mm -hmm. you know, whether, but, but can you do it in a way where you can consistently create the brand? I mean, that's what sort of this show's all about as we do it every week. But if you look at it, when people, when we first started doing it, people were, wow, it really has a lot of production value. I mean, hopefully it looks good, but we've got an open, it, it is pretty formulaic on purpose, right? Right. Um, the, the meat of it's going to be the interview with you sharing value, but we wanted it to have some production value, but it was done. It's done in a way purposefully that we can do it again and again and again. Uh, if you can't, in my experience, if you can't do something consistently, then you're going to struggle to make an impact. And so that would be my thing is, is you need to be consistent, which means you need to be, create content that you can recreate again and again. And I love that about you. I think like, it's so cool. Like when people mention people in this industry who are well-known for their perspective or like thought leadership or expertise on marketing, your name always comes up. And I feel like it's tied in with that consistency. And I think that's cool because honestly, like it is hard. It's hard to successfully run a business and then make time for content creation and to keep things new. And, you know, uh, everybody like it's it's never failing if you try things and maybe totally. they don't work out you know you just learn something more about your audience or what you're capable of and sometimes that's the best way to learn but that consistency piece i think overall no matter what the industry is like everybody struggles with it so you know hats off to you oh thank you i i think that one of the things that you said though to push back is that you were like you said um you know what do you like doing I actually think that's the reason it's important to pick a lane that you love doing because at some point it's going to get hard. The whirlwind is going to get in the way. And if you're like, I'm going to write a blog, but ultimately you don't love writing. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be hard, right? Like yeah. um, I, I enjoy doing videos. I like doing the shared platform thing. So it's easier for me to keep going when I don't feel like it because I, I enjoy doing it. Um, right. And I, so I think picking the lane that you really like is important too. So I, you, we, we talked about what you give, what advice you give to do it right. What mistakes do you see some organizations making when they try to tell their story on social? Hmm. You know, I think when it comes to either story is, again, it goes back to those realistic expectations because I have like, I'm lucky I come, I came into a company in this role who understood you know, the potential that social media has to engage their customers to just, uh, just, uh, what's the, the term that I want to use? Um, distribute, excuse me. I don't know why I had some, it's, you know, my coffee's wearing off guys. Sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> to, distribute, <Totally> good. <laughs> to distribute content and also provide customer service and humanize a brand that's been out here in the promotional product industry for a really long time and maybe, um, you know, expose them to some, some new players in this industry in a different generation. But I've been at other places that have been smaller and they're like, okay, this social media marketing person is going to be the SEO specialist, the web designer, the content marketing manager, the client person. And it's like, <laughs> you know, you can only do so much. And sometimes, you know, you're a part of those companies where they're trying to scale. So they're lean. So you wear many hats and that's okay. But I think like they want to do a really robust campaign. And it's like, you know, can you feasibly like create that concept, 
come up with the messaging, the vehicle that you're going to deliver it, and do you have the players, uh, you know, at your place to really facilitate that in a meaningful way, and then it falls short, and they're kind of like that disconnect, you know, they want to tell their story about who their company is, but they really have to think holistically about marketing, um, you know, and the resources that they have. So that's kind of what I would say, you know, long story short is being realistic about goals and expectations and manpower. And, you know, you can do a smaller campaign and still have a lot of impact. You just have to like recognize where your business is at. Yeah, I think in your point about this too is I think we're seeing, and this is something I've been preaching for a long time, but I think the you're seeing it in in the algorithms and and sort of the what social media values is that hand to hand combat that that more manual uh, interaction where mm-hmm. you're actually engaging with people. I think the algorithm's starting to value that, but that takes time. That is yes. not a that is not something you can schedule, you know. And so understanding what it, it isn't just putting a really cool post out there. It's then engaging. It's then mm-hmm. promoting. It's then putting it in a group. It's it's not just a, a one moment act. And I think that's a part of what you're saying, right? Like that you mm-hmm. you need to allocate those time, uh, those resources to do it. Yeah, one hundred percent. And I think if anything, it's it's great because like it means we're no longer in a period in like marketing where it's spray and pray like we have so many insights now and we can make smarter decisions and we can work smarter instead of harder and it's not cool you know we just have to make that shift like you know and break some maybe older bad habits to catch up to where people are now but i think you know if we do that you can have really good impact and success that's online yeah, I agree. So final question for you. I'm curious because we talked at the first question, I kind of talked about what your day in the life looked like. So what's your favorite part of being the social media manager at ASI? So relationship building, mm-hmm. um, relationship building, whether it is in person, you know, I can't wait to see all my friend, like <laughs> all my online friends in person. <laughs> totally agree. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, oh, you know, like it's nice to do this. It's definitely made connecting more easier and that, you know, if you can't afford that flight ticket to go to a conference or things like that, you can still see your favorite people online. But, you know, I love networking in the groups. I love cultivating community, but it's really just about relationship building, humanizing ASI, and just being a brand advocate, like a living, breathing brand advocate for our company. And, you know, I've met some incredible people along the way for doing that. And I'm really grateful for this role for that. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time, Alyssa. I, I'm with you. I can't wait to do this in person. And uh, it's, it was a true pleasure. We're going to have to do it again, okay? Yeah, thank you so much for having me. This was such an honor, a joy to speak to you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right. Well, that's going to wrap up this edition of Delivering Marketing Joy. We'll see you next time.